And welcome to Save Our Schools, Arizona's recap and analysis of Governor Doug Ducey's 2021 State of the State Address. I'm Beth Lewis, a teacher, parent, and co-founder of Save Our Schools, Arizona. It's important to point out that Governor Ducey delivered his speech today virtually from the safety of his office in order to protect himself, his colleagues, and his family, as Arizona remains the world's number one COVID hotspot and our hospitals and healthcare workers are overwhelmed. Meanwhile, many educators were forced back into their classrooms today, despite the same dangerous conditions. Today, Governor Ducey talked about our kids missing out, but there's no more horrific loss than the loss of a parent, a grandparent, a beloved teacher or amazing coach. Losses that thousands of Arizona kids have already suffered. Our kids aren't falling behind. They're surviving and they will be okay because Arizona families, neighbors and public schools have stepped up to the plate to educate and support kids in more ways than ever before. The governor today also threatened that he will not be funding so-called empty seats. Governor, that is dead wrong. These seats are not empty and no one knows that better than Arizona parents who are sitting next to the children in those seats at home doing their best, witnessing the amazing effort that our educators and families are putting in. Arizona families need support at this time, not threats of even more funding cuts. The governor also talked about the achievement gap and the ways that our most vulnerable and high need students suffer the worst. He's right, but he's also the one with the power to start that change change that's been needed for the first six years he was in office by funding their education for once. We have been fighting to close the achievement gap with greater resources and higher funding for years, and the governor has never delivered. We will never get ahead if our funding falls further behind. Educators and families are putting in 100%, and so should our elected representatives. Our students deserve full funding, not arbitrary cuts and excuses. Governor Ducey also criticized distance learning. And there are certainly bad apples in Arizona, like the online charter schools pocketing tens of millions of tax dollars every year for next to no results. As a teacher, I of course would prefer to be in person with my students when it's safe. Until then, Distance learning has been incredibly successful in schools and districts that have put their full faith in teachers and have targeted resources appropriately. The unsuccessful situations are the yo-yo situations where parents and teachers have no clue what's next. To plan the way families and educators deserve, we need to know that we have the resources to do the job well. We need 100% funding for all types of learning, not punishment for making safe choices. What's more, when the governor glorified temporary education options that parents want to make permanent, what he really meant was siphoning more and more tax dollars to unaccountable ESA vouchers and unregulated microschools, while the public schools that 95% of our families actually choose are threatened with yet another year of budget cuts. With all due respect, governor, read the room. So what did we want to hear instead? First, we needed to hear a heartfelt statement of support for our public schools and our teachers and staff who are innovating beyond wildest expectations to ensure that more than 1 million students across the state are learning and that wraparound services like counseling, tutoring, special education and meals are still being provided to our kids. Instead of the governor vowing to underfund our public schools, we needed to hear a plan to support our students. We need a proposal for real sustainable funding for our public schools, which remain billions of dollars short. We call upon the governor to rethink the harm he is vowing to cause our families. We call on him to work with legislative leadership to ensure that our students will be funded at 100% this year. This means reversing his current executive order dictating that district and charter schools receive 5% less funding than last year as a punishment for choosing online learning. 
the money's there and we call upon the state legislature to do the right thing, regardless of the governor's misplaced priorities. We would have liked to hear a promise to shore up investments for particular populations that need funding the most, our students who receive special education services and low income students. The governor spoke of the achievement gap and the right for all families, regardless of income, to get a great education. And we agree. That's why his plan to cut funding for those same students is so harmful. It's why Save Our Schools Arizona and many others have championed better support for these communities for years to no avail. We know these issues have broad bipartisan support by Arizona voters, and we will fight to ensure that these overlooked communities are no longer ignored by policymakers. As the leader of our state, Governor Ducey has a responsibility to bring our citizens together. Yet year after year, he refuses to do so. We know that strong schools build strong communities and a strong state. Our business owners, education leaders, and everyday citizens all know that our public schools are the center of our communities and that now more than ever, we must fight to support them. In the absence of support from the governor, our statewide network of volunteers is watching and ready to ensure that our lawmakers work together this session to ensure fully funded schools for every Arizona child in every neighborhood, regardless of family income or zip code. Thank you for joining us. And remember, now more than ever, we must band together to fight for public education.